What I've been doing lately, and I really don't want to be judged for this, is watching old Soviet cartoons. The Soviets were never known for their art, but their animations were genuinely incredible. Like all good television, it made heavy use of propaganda, either pro-Soviet or anti-Western, and it was never subtle. But as you'll see in this video, the propaganda often has the opposite effect. Welcome to the ridiculous world of Soviet cartoons. One of the most influential Soviet cartoons is called The Millionaire. It tells the story of a wealthy heiress, who sadly dies young. And when I say young, she was around 70 years old. So anyway, this old hag dies, and she leaves her entire fortune to her pet dog. Even in the world of a 1960s cartoon, this was highly unusual. Apparently dreading the prospect of a dog client, the lawyers did all they could to annul her will. But thankfully they were unable to do so, and the bulldog became rich overnight. Here's where it starts to get less realistic. He began walking upright and wore nice suits. He went out to clubs and danced with women, coming home drunk every night. At one point he goes into business, becoming a powerful banker. But for a dog like him, nothing was ever good enough, so he went into politics, and was elected to Congress. And that's where the story ends, having depicted his rise from dog to dog man to congressman. The point of all this was clearly to make the West look bad, but what it really does is make the West look amazing. I would much rather this cartoon be reality. I don't want to live in a world where dogs can't become billionaires, or be elected lawmakers. That's what I believe in. It's what my father believed in, and his father before him. In a sense, the millionaire is the Soviet response to Animal Farm, its main character clearly representing those who inherit vast wealth. At one point, he even ignores other dogs who were once his friends, which is by far the most depressing thing ever shown on film. Stylistically, it is typical of Soviet propaganda films of the 1960s, being crude and bleak. At the time, Soviet artists were discouraged from being abstract. The Soviet leader even condemned abstract art as Western. As a result, the art produced here was really, very incredibly bad. And it's amazing that in this environment, they were able to create such a bizarre cartoon. So I thought I'd upload it here for you all to enjoy. Богатая старуха в одной стране жила. Богатая старуха внезапно умерла. Остался без хозяйки угрюм и одинок, Такой же, как хозяйка, породистый бульдог. Имела та старуха племянников родных, а также по закону наследников иных. Имела та старуха солидный капитал. Когда жди наследство, советный час настал. Наследники узнали к позору своему, что все, увы, досталось бульдогу одному.
Не могут адвокаты за это отвечать. Законно завещание, есть подписи печати. Покойница в контуре составила его. Она озолотила любимца своего. Зачем собаке деньги? Ходить в универмаг? Бывает разве деньги у кошек и собак? Но стал миллионер, осиротевший пес. И стал еще курносей его курносый нос. Квартира в самом центре, на пятой авеню. Шеф-повар составляет на каждый день меню. На завтрак отбивные. Бифштексы на обед. На ужин фрикадельки, сардины и паштет. Он ездит на курорт. Здоровье бережет. По средам парикмахер под бокс его стрижет. Есть у бульдога вилла и новый кадиллак. И шипы у портного собачий черный фраг. Согласно завещанию живет при нем слуга. Он ездит с ним на скачке, на гонке, на пикап. Огни реклам над городом пылают, как пожар. Пес едет развлекаться в ночной шикарный бар. Собачонок 
уже не узнает. Он в клуб миллионеров записан как банкир. У них он научился рычать при слове «мир». Печатают газеты с бульдогом интервью. Бульдог в них излагает позицию свою, собачью точку зрения на космос, на прогресс. И вот уже он избран на выборах Конгресса. Стал, чего не может только наделать капитал.